Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Doggo333, and welcome back to Heart Divine 4. The New Order. Don't surf. I caught myself that time. I didn't say Kaiserreich. I did not say Kaiserreich. Heart Divine 4, The New Order, Don't Surf, as the Union of South Africa. Now, in the last video, we, we prepared, we started reforming things for the um, Native Afri uh, Africans. And we're going one step further by fully opening up the vote to the African to the uh, Afri uh, the Native Africans. So yeah, things are escalating quickly with um, the civil war going on in Madagascar. That's kind of a sign that um, things are going to go downhill quite quickly. Message for the movie star. Mr. Boothesley, Boothalezi, are you there? Asked the man on the other end of the phone line. They told me that you were off filming a movie. Were you? Well, so, well yes, I was, Mr. Schwartz. I was. Said Mango Thulu Boothini Boothaliz Mango Suthu Boothalezi. I think I got that right. Chieftain of a Zulu Nation. It's a film about the Battle of Work Rourke's Drift. I'm playing my great-grandfather, King Seth Wyo. They're making me stand around with a bunch of extras out here near the amphitheater. So, what's the matter? I've been talking with the party leadership in Cape Town, said Harry Schwartz, leader of the U United Party in Transvaal. It's been a while, and we wanted to know if you made a decision on our proposal yet. Boothalazi took a deep breath and said, You know, I'm thinking I'll do it. I've always wanted a career in politics, and I'm glad the United Party thinks the same way. I'll run as a candidate in the upcoming elections, and I'm honored you would make me the first Native Union United Party candidate. You're welcome, Mr. Boothalezi. We're glad to hear that you'll stand for us. Your goals and ours align. You'll be welcome in our ranks. Though technically you aren't the first African candidate, King Suretsi Kama is going to run in the in Baluchaland. We just learned that this morning. Boothalezi laughed. It figures he'd do that. He definitely hates the Germans enough to join you, but that's all right. I'm happy with being second, and hopefully he gets elected so I don't feel alone in Cape Town. I hope so, too. I'll tell Cape Town the good news. Good luck, Mr. Boothalezi. If it doesn't work out, you still have your movie career to fall back on. Herzog and Tambo will have a surprise the next elections. Seems so. Which is 45, I think, when the next election is... Um, yeah. January 1965. Which is nice, you know? I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting it for or something to happen. Ooh, no divisions in basic training. We can finally train some guys! Nice! Um... Were we not training up, uh, what you call it? Thought we were um, Royal African Rifles. View. Mm, we can't train these guys. So, how are our infantry unions, uh, unions, divisions looking? Not too bad. Well, let's see what we can do here. Well, let's check, where is it, logistics. Um, we have some guns available, not too much. Let's, um, let's buy some packed guns, or some OFN guns. And see if we can't, um, prepare covert stay behind forces. And we can train some guys. Mm, do we want to? That's a question. Um, 
Operation Asagai will consist in the formation, financing, arming, and training Triggerman assets in covert resistance activities, including assassination, political provocation, and disinformation. Small-scale operations may cover discrete areas and counter subversion of host, but larger cells stay behind and envis envisage reaction to a crusader operation of fields. Asagai assets will be supplied with arms and explosive cachet caches, Context on Annex 2-2.A to slow down Crusader crew, troops from reaching the Cape while Torch prepares joint deployment. Understood. I have to hope that um the Americans can help us get out um enough to get out of this mess. I've already done well enough, but you know every little bit helps. Well. Hitler can only stay alive for so much long, longer. So we'll have to wait and see. Votes for all the folks. Now we just have to work on this. Reboot for di diplomats. As expected, both the USA and the Reich have tried to make us join their alliances. With the old order crumbling with every day, they are trying to strengthen themselves for becoming storm and are enlisting all possible help. Predictably, our envoys have returned from their missions carrying truckloads of officers, proposals, help promises, and subtle threats to ensure we choose one of them over the other. Of course, we do no such thing. Our neutrality is paramount for our survival, as we are too divided within to uh, be able to properly fight an outside enemy. Therefore, we shall politely refuse all their offers and remind them that we have a policy of open doors towards everyone. In addition, we'll let slip that should any of the great powers try to meddle in our internal affairs too much, we would be forced to seek aid from the others. I like it. It's not very subtle, but it lets them know. Um, what do you want? To, let's do both of these actually. Lower their anger as much as we can. I'm not entirely sure if um supporting the pact helps them um, become stronger. Actually, four to twelve, three to twenty-one, eight to twenty-one. So they might end up outnumbering us, which would not be good. Oop. Votes on the vote. The first step was to find out who would be assigned to the case. The Supreme Court of South Africa had various local d levels, but this one would be her heard at the Appellate Division in Blo Bloemfontein. A number of judges served in the division, but the cases were heard by a panel of five judges. Once the judges who would hear the case were identified, the courting could be getting begin. It's obvious that one of the judges would rule the way they wanted. They had a case history and opinions that pointed to a view that suited with the United Party. Thus they were ignored or completely since they were confident that they could rule the way they wanted. There were bigger concerns. The second judge was a little vaguer on the side they supported. They had some opinions that looked good for the outcome, but had some that didn't. A private conversation, however, gave plenty of confidence that they would rule favorably for the side they wanted. So now they had two. The third was a touch the toughest. They had, a, they had doubts about the merits of a case and wanted to rule against it. This couldn't happen under any circumstances. It took a long time with plenty of conversation, but they were finally convinced of its merit. A new courthouse in their hometown being named after them would be officially unrelated. But fourth was a judge that was favorable to the side of the government, wa the, the government wanted. They weren't on the case originally, but some strings were pulled and they got in. Mostly to make sure they were covered if any of the three went back on their ward. So when the Appellate Division met in Bloemfontein to decide on voting rights for neighbors, the United Party could relax a large amount. Sure, officially the decision would be made after the arguments, just like all other cases heard by them. But that wasn't how things really worked. And the government could already celebrate a great legal victory when the court convened. And here we go. Universal voting, ladies and gentlemen. Where is the voting? Political laws. Very nice. Um, yeah. This um, we have a lot. We have a lot of manpower, actually. Holy crap! Ooh, nobody expected the prospect of mass enfranchisement of the largest ethnic group in South Africa to be popular with everyone, especially with the ethnic group that had the most to lose in terms of political power. The protests in Bloemfontein that day weren't peaceful, if heated were peaceful, if heated. There were plenty of angry chants, but most of the demonstrators tried to avoid any hostile encounters with the police. Many were content to chant with their families and a march under the Verklor, perhaps enjoy a barbecue. 
Only a few of the initial demonstrators carried weapons, and the police hoped that all, all the large crowd of protesters would stay in that way. That changed when the mob began to rock cars back and forth, with the di disturbance attracted the attention of the police officers. An armored van smashed through the outer gate and the garage gate. It was uh, followed by a large group of Afghan or paramilitaries. The sudden attack overwhelmed a small number of guards inside the building. Proceedings were immediately canceled as the occupants tried to clear out, but it was too late. The courtroom staff hid in various rooms as the Boer commandos painted slogans on the walls, urinated over furniture, and harassed the court members they found. Police rushed the scene but the amount of demonstrators prevented them from making a timely entrance. When they finally arrived, the commandos were firmly in control of the building. They had men with si sidearms out front, snipers with rifles on the upper floors, and a vehicular flag that had been on the streets now flying in the place of a South African flag. Sent all necessary officers, we have a code red priority on Fontaine. Shit. Shit just got real, guys. That is, um, breach and clear. It wasn't going to be an easy day for the men of the South African police or the citizens of Bloemfontein. Hostage situations, unknown number of hostiles, unknown number of hostages, many VIPs amongst them. They did have a few advantages, however. Hostage takers lacked heavy weaponry and were extremely disorganized. And they had been so kind as to put major breach in the fence. So while the negotiators negotiators tried to bore them to death, the police made a plan. The first step was the moving of a fire truck and a group of officers near the front of a building. This made the Boers move towards the front to prepare for the expected attack. Meanwhile, groups of armed force police of armed police gathered in the building behind the court. Under the watchful eye of sharpshooters, another a group of welders cut away a section of a fence to get another point of entry. As soon as the go-ahead was given, grenade launchers filled the building with tear gas as the police went in. A large number went through the hole in the fence, with a larger van went through the breach in the fence. I lost my place when I moved back. Uh, breach in the fence created by the van. Snappers went to work, shooting at the paramilitaries when they popped up in the windows. A few min minutes later... The hostages were being let out, and they were forced to lie in the grass as we were checked for weapons. They were scared, but unharmed, even the judges. Several of the boars were down, the rest were captured, a few injuries in the to the police force, but no fatalities. All in all, it's a successful operation. Job well done. That'll teach them a lesson. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, monarchy referendum real quick. We, um, we have this pretty much in the bag. I don't want to say that quite yet. I don't want to jinx it. But we're doing well. Um, only place of resistance is the Orange Free State. But what are you going to do? you got to love giving the vote, vote to the African-American minority to help your political cause. we got to love how that works. Politics at its best. Did I say African American? I I might be an. If I said African American, I apologize. I'm a dumbass. African. I'm. I'm used to saying African American. Uh, fortify just in case. It's become clear to us that the world is on the brink of another major crisis, and our neutrality may serve us very little, as it did for Belgium and the Netherlands during the last war. Perhaps we should do something more to ensure that we have a chance of survival in case the Germans march south. The South African. Defense Force High Command has proposed to us a plan to protect ourselves against the rabid wolves encircling us. A ring of defenses will be built alongside our northern border, coupled with a fortified perimeter around the Cape, where we will have our last stand with our backs against the sea. Some may call some call our concerns unfounded, and our, the plan will be a mere waste of money, but it can begin the salvation of our country if the Panthers' armored wheels start spinning. Sounds wise. It's probably... The, the move, honestly. Oh, we're prepping the best we can. Anything we can do with them um, other than advising troops? Not really. Oh, we got a South African Special Force Brigade. Very nice. Let's see where this guy goes. Um, 
I got him on board with your Orange Free State and uh, Masario. Smart, honestly. Get behind that. Hmm. Where do we want to campaign in? Do you want to do some last minute campa campaigning? Oh no. Oh god, no. They did it, guys. No good. Nope. Um, let's increase... Let's campaign within Transvaal. See if that'll do anything. We can also develop Oranga. Which we don't have much to do. Oh. And so it begins. Tragedy has consumed Germany as a news spread. First throughout the Reich and then the world. Adolf Hitler, fear of Germany and the victor of the Second World War, has died. Fuck yeah, there we go. Whilst the Fuhrer's declining health had been speculated about for some time, the news had nevertheless shocked Germany, uh, left Germany a state of complete shock. The Reichstag has announced that three months of mourning shall be held and that the Fuhrer shall be buried beside his late wife, Eva Hitler, with dignitaries from around the world invited to the funeral. While Germany mourns internationally, many are doing the crab dance, and the crab mean, to celebrate the death of the man responsible for three decades of, in of suffering throughout the world. Yet many international commentators fear that what may now become Germany, the Third Reich, having already been embattled in a, embattled in a p bitter power struggle over rightful successful to her viewership. Day to remember. The death of Adolf Hitler has come to the ears of a national party, and they answered it with sorrow and passion. The call of Herzog. Members of the party are t come together so they may hold a vigil for the Fuhrer. And in the name of the man they seem to mourn, they call they're calling for a week exclusive to Hitler's respect. People should light candles for the fallen German. Businesses they demand should close down. Reports of an armed boar men of reports of armed boar men are reaching us. The details suggest that they are organized by the National Party and are not only providing security for the mourners, but also... Oh, God. But also forcing businesses to close down and threatening their political opponents. From Port Elizabeth up to Petersburg, it seems that this is not something we can ignore. It seems... Herzog is making a very interesting gamble on behalf of his party, cleverly using the vigil as a way of rallying his supporters. Herzog proclaims that his his lockdown of a party, of a, his lockdown of a country, will stay under the South African government. Will stay until the South African government pay proper respects to Adolf Hitler and denounce what they call the Anglo-American imperialist intervention and in, interference on South Africa. We cannot let this happen. We cannot allow this to be, become greater than it is. They are defying the Dominion. Fucking get it under control. Fuck. Oh, this is not good. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Um, okay, so. Oh, no. We seem... We, we have a problem. The police were, was sent to disperse the boar visual, but it seems that things are not the way that... Are not going the way we want them to. One of the officers, Eugene Terry Blanchet, has refused to carry out his orders. He has gone over to the Boers, joining them as his fellow officers either observed him in shock or followed his example and deserted too. According to reports, the crowd was roused to applaud him. He spoke to them, delivering a big speech by the side of Herzog, praising his policies and one independent Boer nation. Terra Blanche was n known inside the South Africa, the SAP, as especially devoted to the ideals of the National Party. Seems that he's letting himself free, himself free to do as he pleases against any authority. 
South Africa cannot approve this. This whole country is watching him receive a glorious ovation from the masses down the streets, insulting the authority of government. We are losing control of a situation. Not only is he defecting to them, <coughs> thanks to his actions, the rest of our officers are refusing to disperse for protest. If you do not do something soon, we may lose the country. Those boars must be stopped. The army must be sent in. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Um. Yeah, this is not good. And, um. <laughs> hell of a time to stop, but we kind of have to. So, thank you for watching, as always, ladies and gentlemen. If you liked this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike want to see more of my content in the future go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more uploads every weekday as well as every saturday if you have any comments feedback concerns anything on that regard uh on that line go ahead and leave the comment section below i read all the comments i get and i appreciate any little feedback you kind of folks might have for me if you want to send a few bucks my way if you're so inclined I have a patreon down below that um you can donate to if you don't want to or you can't i understand but I'd appreciate it if you at least consider it. I also have a Discord down link below if you want to send a few bucks my way. I'm not send a few bucks my way. If you want to join up with me, chat, play games, and just have a fun old time generally. Also, I also have a um, Twitch channel if you want to check that out. I don't upload very frequently, but I um, or I don't go live very frequently anymore. But if you want to stay up to date on when I go live, go ahead and uh, check it out. But yeah, that's about it, folks. My name has been Doggo333. Thank you for watching, as always, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.